While I was browsing a watch the other day, looking for some fresh inspiration, I came across this website that had just one sight of the day last Monday. Coincidentally, one of our pro members had also shared the link in our Discord and the moment I saw it, I knew I had to cover it. It features some very impressive scroll animations and the entire site is put together with great attention to detail. It's easy to see why it won the sight of the day. As you scroll, there is this timeline experience where several animations are linked together in a smooth sequence. In this section, you can see that as you scroll down, a card scales up to fill the screen while the market text in the background fades out. As the scale completes, the content inside is revealed with a cool text animation. And it doesn't stop there. As you continue scrolling, the current card moves back and fades out while the next card scrolls in. Once the new card reaches the top, it reveals its own content. This animation pattern continues through a few more cards until you reach the next section of the site. If you follow this channel, you probably expected a video on this already. I really wanted to recreate this effect using GSAP and scroll trigger and after spending about 7 hours on it, I managed to put together a working version using multiple scroll trigger instances to match the animation flow. You can see here, just like the original site, the first card starts somewhat hidden, scales into view and reveals its content. As you scroll, each new card appears while the previous one fades behind it. Honestly, this one wasn't simple to recreate, but I eventually got it working somehow. In this video, I'll walk you through how to recreate this animation timeline step by step using GSAP and scroll trigger. If you enjoy this breakdown, leave a like on the video and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And if you want to access the source code for this project plus hundreds of other micro projects along with a new website template every month, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's jump into the code. We'll start by setting up the basic structure of our page with three main sections, an intro, a card section where all the animation happens and an outro. Let's first take care of the intro and outro sections. Both of these will simply contain an H1 element with some placeholder text. Since they are not the focus of this video, we'll keep them minimal for now. Now moving on to the card section, I'll begin by creating a div with the class card. Inside this, I'll add another div with the class card wrapper. This wrapper will help us apply fade and scale animations later on. The wrapper is split into two parts, card content and card image. Within the card content, I'll add two more divs, one for the title and one for the description. For now, these will be just an H1 and a paragraph tag. Then in the card image section, I'll add an image tag. For this video, we'll need a total of 4 cards, so I'll duplicate this entire structure 3 more times, updating the text and image source for each one. There is one special thing about the first card. We also need a marquee animation in the background, so inside the first card div, I'll add a div called card marquee and inside that another div with the class marquee. I'll place a few h1 tags inside it. These will animate continuously to create a moving text effect behind the card. And that wraps up the html structure. Next we'll jump into the css and start styling everything together. First we import the inter font from google fonts. Next, we apply a basic reset using the universal selector, removing all the default margin and padding and setting box sizing to border box for consistent sizing. In the body, we set the font to enter. For images, we make sure they take up the full width and height of their container, use object fit to keep them properly cropped and apply will change transform to improve performance during animations. Now for the text styles, headings are given a large font size, medium font weight, slight negative letter spacing and comfortable line spacing. Paragraphs are styled with a slightly smaller font size and a regular font weight. Each section is set to full width with a dark background and white text. We use relative positioning to allow child elements to be placed absolutely if needed. For the intro and outro sections, we give them full viewport height and some padding and use flexbox to center the content both horizontally and vertically. Inside these sections, the heading is centered and given a fixed width to keep the layout clean and focused. Now for the card section, it's structured vertically using flexbox and each card is spaced out using a large gap.
The Marquis section inside the first card is positioned in the vertical center and takes up the full width. We hide any overflow and display the scrolling text horizontally using Flexbox. Each piece of marquee text is styled with a large font size, bold font weight and spacing between each item to keep the layout open. Each individual card is set to fill the screen and has some inner padding. It's relatively positioned so the child elements can be placed freely inside. Inside the card, the wrapper fills the entire space and has will change transform applied to optimize any animated movement. The image section is positioned absolutely to fill the card with large rounded corners and hidden overflow to clip the image edges. The image itself is scaled up to give us some extra zoom effect for the parallax animation when the card scale animation happens. Next, the content section is placed on top of the image, it's centered horizontally, aligned to the bottom and sits above everything else using a higher Z index value. Within the content area, the card title is centered both vertically and horizontally using absolute positioning and transforms. The card description is placed near the bottom, limited to a fixed width and hidden by default using opacity and a slight offset. We'll animate this in later. Now since we'll be adding a custom reveal animation to the first card, we will need a bit of extra scroll room until the second card comes into view. So to create that spacing, we add some extra top margin to the second one. We also include styles for the character animations. The character class wraps each character in an inline block with overflow hidden and each span inside starts off translated to the side, ready for the entrance animation. Finally, we handle small screen responsiveness with a media query. For mobile devices, we reduce the heading size, remove letter spacing, let the intro and outro headings take full width, and expand the description text for better readability. That's all for this CSS setup. Let's move on to animations next. Before we dive into the main scroll animation, here is a quick heads up. I created a separate file called marquee.js to handle the marquee effect you saw behind the first card. We won't be going into details of this part since it's not the focus of this video. I actually reused a snippet from a code pen by the GSAP team that creates a seamless infinite marquee loop. It works perfectly for our use case, so I dropped it in as is. Nothing custom here, just a plug and play utility. I link the original code pen in the description in case you want to take a look or explore how it works under the hood. Now with that setup, let's move on and start building the main scroll animation experience which we'll be writing inside this new file called script.js. We'll begin by importing everything we need at the top of our script file. First, we bring in the setup marquee animation function which we already talked about earlier. Next, we import gsap along with two plugins, scroll trigger and split text. And finally, we import Lenis, which is the smooth scrolling library we'll be using for this project. Once the DOM is ready, we register the GSAP plugins we'll be using, split text and scroll trigger. Now let's set up Lenis. We create a new Lenis instance and connect it to scroll trigger. This keeps scroll trigger in sync with Lenis's smooth scrolling behavior. Next, we hook Lenis into GSAP sticker. This ensures that everything, animations, scroll behavior, and updates run smoothly together. We also disable lag smoothing to keep Lenis running frame accurately without interpolation. Now that smooth scrolling is set up, let's move on to preparing our card elements for animation. First, we select all elements with the class name card and store them in an array using two array utility from GSAP. This gives us access to each card individually. Then, we grab the first card in that array, the one at the top, and set it aside as our intro card. This card will have a slightly different animation setup compared to the others. Next, we select all the heading elements inside the card titles. These are the large titles we'll animate letter by letter. To do that, we use the split text plugin. For each title, we split it into individual characters and wrap each one with a custom class called character. We also place each character inside its own span tag so we can animate them more precisely later on. Once that's done, we move on to the intro card's image. 
we grab two elements the image container and the image itself these are the parts we'll animate on scroll we set the initial state of the image container by scaling it down and giving it a large border radius this gives it a rounded capsule like appearance then we scale the image itself up slightly so it feels like it's zoomed in to start we'll animate this back to normal as the scroll progresses now before we begin writing any scroll based animations we create two utility functions one to show the content and one to hide it the first function which reveals the content animates each character of the title into place by sliding it in from the right then it brings in the paragraph text with a short delay and fades it in smoothly The second function does the opposite. It slides each character back out to the right and fades out the description, shifting it slightly as it disappears. These two utility functions will be used later to handle how the content enters and exits as we scroll through the different cards. Now let's talk about how we animate the intro card on scroll. The idea here is to animate multiple things in sync. The card scaling up, the border radius shrinking, and the background marquee fading out and eventually the content sliding in. Let's break down how we approach this. First, we target three elements inside the intro card. We get the market text element that sits in the background. Then we grab all the individual character spans that make up the title. And finally, we select the description paragraph. With these elements ready, we create a scroll trigger tied to the intro card. We tell scroll trigger to start the animation when the top of the intro card reaches the top of the viewport. And we set the end of the animation to extend over a long scroll distance about three times the viewport height. This gives us enough scroll space to play out the full animation gradually. Inside the onUpdate callback function, which runs continuously as we scroll, we calculate a scroll progress value that goes from 0 to 1. We use that progress value to drive all of our animations. First, we animate the image container. We scale it up from half its size to full size by adding the scroll progress to the starting scale. We also shrink the border radius at the same time, starting from a large rounded shape and gradually flattening it out as we scroll. This gives us that satisfying capsule to rectangle transition. Next, we scale the image inside the container in reverse. It starts zoomed in and slowly scales down to its natural size as we scroll. Then we handle the marquee text. We want it to fade out as the container scales up but only within a specific scroll range. So we check if the image scale is between two key values. If it is, we calculate how far we have scrolled within that range and fade the marquee out based on that. If we are before that range, the marquee stays fully visible. If we are past it, it's fully hidden. Lastly, we trigger the content animation once the scroll progress reaches the end, meaning we have scrolled through the full animation. We reveal the content by calling the animate in function we defined earlier. And if we scroll back up, we call the animate out function to hide everything again. To avoid repeating the animation unnecessarily, we use a custom flag on the intro card to track whether the content has already been revealed or not. So overall, this scroll trigger instance controls everything for the intro card, scaling, fading, and content transitions, all driven by scroll progress. Now that the intro card animation is set, let's move on to managing how each card behaves in the scroll sequence. The plan here is to pin each card to the screen one by one so that it stays fixed in place while the user scrolls through its animation. This creates that classic stacked timeline effect. We start by looping through each card using a for each loop. For each one, we check if it's the last one in the sequence. We do this by comparing the current index to the total number of cards. If it's not the last card, we want it to pin it only until the next card reaches the top of the screen. If it is the last card, we give it a fixed scroll duration instead, long enough for the final animation to complete. We also control whether pin spacing is applied. For all cards except the last one, we turn it off to create that seamless transition for one card to the next. Now that pinning is handled, let's talk about the second part of the section which is animating cards as they exit the viewport. This adds the nice effect where the outgoing card slightly scales down and fades out as the next card scrolls in. So again, we loop through the cards but this time we only target the ones before the last card because the last one doesn't need to fade out. Inside each card, we select the wrapper element. This is the part we'll apply the scale and opacity animations to. Then we set up another scroll trigger. This one activates when the next card starts to scroll into view. We define the start point when the next card hits the bottom of the viewport and the end point when it reaches the top. Inside the onUpdate callback, 
We calculate the scroll progress and use that to animate the wrapper. As the user scrolls, we gradually scale down the card slightly and reduce its opacity. This gives a really smooth transition effect. The current card gently fades and shrinks while the new one is moving in. Now let's take care of the image animations for the remaining cards. This effect is similar to what we did on the intro card where the image zooms out and the border radius shifts as you scroll. So here we loop through all cards again but skip the first one since we already animated that separately. For each card we grab two things, the image itself and its outer container. Then we create a scroll trigger that starts when the card enters from the bottom of the viewport and ends when it reaches the top. Inside the onUpdate function, we animate both the scale and the border radius based on scroll progress. The image starts zoomed in and gradually scales down as the user scrolls up through the card. At the same time, the image container goes from a rounded capsule shape to a flatter one by decreasing the border radius. This helps each card feel like it's morphing smoothly into place as it scrolls in. Now we move on to the final content reveal. Once again, we loop through all the cards, but this time we skip the first card since that one already handles its reveal logic in a separate scroll trigger instance. For each remaining card, we target the description paragraph and the title characters that we split earlier. We then create a simple scroll trigger that activates when the card reaches the top of the viewport. At that point, we call our animate content in function to reveal the text sliding in the characters and fading in the description. And if the user scrolls back up and the card leaves the viewport in reverse, we call animate content out to hide everything again. This adds the clean scroll synced entrance and exit animation for each card's content. And finally, at the very end, we initialize the marquee animation by calling our setup marquee animation function which loops the background marquee behind the intro card. That completes the scroll animation setup. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.